Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Beruchim Abayim, to everybody. Today, Monday, the 30th day of Nisan, first day of Rosh Chodesh Iyar, corresponding to the 12th of April, 2021. Today's class has been graciously sponsored by Ezra Zuri and his wife, Fortuna Atiyeh, Le'ilui Nishmat, her beloved father, Cesar Ezra Ben Fortunei Turjeman Alev Shalom, as well as by Shlomo, and Sarah Nahmias uh, for the Refua Shelema of their niece Anina Batlina Greenberg. May Hashem give her a Refua Shelema among the Holim of Am Israel. Amen. As well as a Mavdil by Jacob Dweck Cohen, Le'ilui Nishmat, his beloved uncle Moshe Ben Victoria. Alava Shalom. It is on that to the words of Torah, their Neshamot will have. Aliyah in Gan Eden, and the Hola will have a refuah shelema among the Holim of Am Israel. So before we actually begin with the uh, number 15th of the Omer counting, let's devote a few moments to the Rosh Chodesh Yad introduction, and Be'ezat Hashem tomorrow, that is the first day of Iyar, second day of Rosh Chodesh, will devote a bit more uh, of time. So the Torah calls the month of Iyar the concept of Chodesh Hasheni. Also, the Navi in Melachim writes that this name is called Ziv, which means that is the beginning when the sun starts shining a bit stronger than what they did till the time of Pesach. As we know, the Pasuk writes, Hayom atem yotzeim bechodesh ha'aviv. The Bnei Israel came out of Egypt during the time of the spring. But the spring is the introduction to the summer. So once the month of Iyar comes, the sun starts shining a bit stronger. And interesting enough that this concept was that it has the power, this month has the power of healing. Now, interesting enough, if you look at the word Iyar, Aleph, Yod, Yod, Resh. It gives us the beautiful verse that says, Ani Hashem Rofeecha. Aleph, Ani, I. Yod, Yod, which makes Hashem's name. Rofeecha, your healer. So our Rabbi tell us that the month of Iyar is the most of, one of the most bountiful months for healing to the life of the person. And the same thing that happened with our forefathers when they left Egypt. We were traveling in the desert for seven weeks. From these seven weeks, two weeks were in the month of Nisan, but four weeks were in the month of Iyar, and the last week in the month of Sivan. So what is this telling me? That the majority of the healing of Am Israel from not only living in Egypt 210 years, but specifically the last 86 years of harsh labor and slavery. So the healing took place on its majority during the month of uh, during the month of Iyar, the way it's a known concept uh, when it comes to this particular month. So by Ezat Hashem, let us hope and pray that in the Zechut of Rosh Chodesh Iyar, Ani Hashem Rofeecha, May Hashem send the refuah shelema to all of the holim of Am Israel and especially those affected by the uh, coronavirus. Uh, and Be'ezat Hashem, let us hope that this month truly brings a Yeshua and Nehama for all of Am Israel. Amen. Tomorrow, Beli Nether, we're going to welcome Rabbi Chaim Palachi and other sources because today is actually the last day of Nisan and the first day of Rosh Chodesh. So when you read the Hilim today, you read the Hilim Teri, the thirtieth day. Tomorrow we read the first day of the month, the way the protocol when two days of Rosh Chodesh are. Now we're gonna read today, or we're gonna learn together, rather, the Sefira number fifteen. Let me just have the books ready. Baruch Hashem, today our Kolel is reopening after the Pesach recess. So we'll have to finish the class five minutes earlier to give an introduction 
lecture to the Kolel rabbinical students. And Be'ezat Hashem will come back at around 11 to continue the weekly class of the Pirkei Avot. So yesterday we said goodbye to Ishaq Avinu, Alava Shalom, that he welcomed David Melech on number 14th of the Omer. Today we're starting with the 15th number of the Omer. And right away we will see two words popping up. Hesed Shebatif Eret, which literally the Hesed means the kindness, which we understand. And Tif Eret has a lot of meanings. One of them is harmony. Now, the part of the human body that is represented by the Midah of Tif Eret, perhaps you are able to see the diagram right here, is the torso of the human body, which means the connection between the left side and the right side, and how many critical parts we have in our torso, besides the heart, the digestive system, lymph nodes, connection to the neck, the esophagus, the trachea, the collarbone, all that is connected to this particular part of the body. And this connector, Kabbalistically speaking, is connected to Yaakov Avinu Alava Shalom. So it seems to a certain extent that this Midah seems to be a key integral part of the human body. What does that mean? Everyone agrees that the heart has an unbelievable level of importance even compared to an arm, because an arm is connected to action, but the heart is connected to life. Left or right arm doesn't matter. So let's read quickly the concept of Tif Eret. So first Tif Eret says the introduction that is the ideal balance in the aspect of the creation of the world. Our mission is to combine the physical with the spiritual. Too much physical and too little spiritual is not good. Too much spiritual and no material also not good. But once I'm able to combine both aspects in a coordinated fashion, so I'm having the best of both worlds. This is like, like music, for example, right? You have different music players in an orchestra, in a symphonic orchestra. And once they are all together, then you're able to listen to the beautiful sound of music. So it says that Tif Eret also means the concept of truth, literally. Also, it's connected to Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu, if you remember, Yaakov, the Pasuk says, Titen emet le Yaakov. Yaakov Avinu represents the truth. Rabbi Yaakov Avinu represents the aspect of the Torah. Remember, uh, last week we quoted the Mishnah briefly of the Pirkei Avot. And what does the Mishnah say? Ala Torah, ala Avodah, be'al gemilut hasadim. The Mishnah puts the Torah on top of the list. Why? Because if the Torah will not exist, or if Bnei Israel will not occupy themselves with Torah learning, the world will not be able to exist. So not only that the torso unites the right side of the body with the left side of the body and gives life to the human body, but the Torah is exactly the same, connects both aspects of life and gives life to the person. Additionally, additionally, uh, the Tif Eret, Kabbalistically speaking, is connected to the third day of the creation of the world. And there the creation of the world says, twice Kitov. Twice that is good. The first day was said Kitov. The second day was not because the second day became incomplete and only became completed when the third day of the creation was actually activated. And there the Torah uses the word Kitov twice. So we say why the Torah says that Tuesday Kitov twice, Tov la Shamaim, Betov la Beriot, good for heavenly matters and good for human or materialistic manners, matters. And that's the reason why many times 
when people travel or when people uh, buy a business or they move into a home, they do it on Tuesday because Tuesday carries a double portion of Beracha in the life of the person. So let's try to explain or to understand basically the connection between Abraham Avinu and Yaakov Avinu. Yeah, Abraham, as we know, represents the kindness and Yaakov Avinu represents the concept of the harmony. So it says as follows. That action number one is being thankful to Akadosh Baruch Hu, how beautiful the world was made. Can you imagine, he asks, if the world will be black and white? The world will be boring in that aspect. You go to the supermarket, any supermarket, how colorful and elegant and delicious the items look. If it's a fruit or if it's a vegetable, the different smells, the different colors, the different flavor, the different tastes. Now, Hashem could have made a uniform flavor and maybe things will be different, but Hashem made it colorful and elegant so the person can derive also enjoyment just by looking at it. So therefore, it says that a person should take the moment to appreciate even the colors of the fruits and the vegetables, which is a chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ben Adam Lechavero. Here is an interesting concept. It says that sometimes people don't like people. God forbid, it should never happen. But the reality is that occasionally you hear cases that people make comments, I don't like that person. So today's message is, don't concentrate on the negative aspect of that person. Concentrate on the beauty of that person. And allow me to clarify, the beauty that we are talking about does not refer to the external beauty, like we gave the class yesterday to the young students of our Bat Mitzvah program for the girls, explaining the holiness of a Jewish girl and importance of being careful, etc. in the life. But in a sense, it says here, why you concentrate on the negative aspect? If you look at a person with a positive set of eyes in a good way, you're going to change the, your perspective against about that person. And instead of disliking the person, you're going to come to the realization, oh, he's a nice fellow. He's a nice guy. And I, sometimes I hear this, that people make comments. So I didn't know he was such a nice guy. I thought he was an ogre. I said, you think like that because you never interacted with the person. Or you don't like the way he looks. Or you don't like the way he dresses. So interesting enough, there is a Gemara that talks about praising the bride to the husband. Okay, the Gemara in Ketubot. So it says that you should tell the husband how beautiful of a wife he has. So somebody asks a question, and what if she's not beautiful? And that's debatable. So it's Betty Lel says, we didn't ask you if it's beautiful in your eyes. But if she is beautiful in the eyes of the husband, and that's why he's marrying her, that should be enough for you to praise her. Don't judge a book by its cover. And that's a challenge that our generation has. We label people, we give titles, influencers dictate our life, Social media drives our life to a certain extent. And at the end of the day, is an empty shell. It's not the essence of life. And not only that, the Tosafot explains that the beauty that we're referring to the person in that Gemara is not only on the external looks or the physical looks of the body, but actually the beauty in the actions of the person. For example, 
a pleasant, unkind, a, a bright. Na'a bima'aseha. Pleasant with her actions, personality. Hasuda, that performs act of kindness. So you praise this fellow's wife, the bride, and you did not hurt anybody. Continues and it says, Ben Adam le'atzmo. It says something that we have discussed in the past, the topic of Heshbon HaNefesh, the daily accountability of our actions. Basically what it says here is that a person needs to be tifered, needs to be honest and truth, truthful with themselves. So it says when you go to sleep at night, lay down in bed, I don't think that automatically the moment that a person puts the head on the pillow, they're going to fall asleep immediately. Last night, I was telling my wife earlier, I couldn't sleep well. I don't know. I came home early. I went to bed early, but I wasn't able to sleep. And I, Baruch Hashem, I woke up, I prayed, etc. So what do you do when you're in bed? So a lot of things people do. But one of the things that he says to do is that a person should run quickly in the brain to analyze how was the day. From the moment that we woke up in the morning till the moment that we're going to go to sleep at night by Ezat Hashem, how was the day? Is there an area that perhaps I spoke too strong to someone? Was there an area that I should have not reacted in the way that I did? Was there an area that I was happy and pleased that I did it? And by Zat Hashem, I can emulate that tomorrow. This is the message for the person. Obviously, there are many more things. It could be if a person spoke about someone or a person acted in a way that wasn't suitable. So in other words, the emet, the truth, what Yaakov Avinu represents as the Pasuk right, which is part of our daily prayers. Titen emet le Yaakov, Hesed le Abraham, Emet le Yaakov, Moshe Emet, Torah To Emet, Torah Tzivalanu Moshe, Morasha Kehilat Yaakov. These are all verses, verses rather, that make emphasis on the attribute of truthfulness and harmony that, and beauty that Yaakov Avinu represented. Now, Let's welcome the second source of today's class and gives us additional exercises for us to try. And it says as follows. The person must devote time during the day to contemplate and to think at the expressions of love that God displays to us. So somebody may ask, and it says, I'm just checking the system here. How do I know that God loves me? So first of all, the fact, the fact that a person wakes up in the morning, it means that God has plans for us. God has an agenda for us. And God has a mission that we must fulfill. But if the true person, the emet person, starts thinking about every level of blessing that we have in our life, from health, vision, moving, speech, smell. Today, being able to smell is a good sign. And a person who doesn't smell, they already start fearing. Maybe the person, God forbid, has COVID and everything that comes with it. Your family, you have children, you have grandchildren. You know, somebody complained to me the other day concerning, no, the grandkids come, they make a lot of noise. So I said to this person, you know, I have two couples that are willing to pay whatever you ask for in order to have children sounds in their home. Because unfortunately they are married for several years and unable to conceive. So for one person became a, a, a moment of I had it, 
and another person is begging for it. So basically what he's saying here in the introduction today is count your blessings and make sure that you realize that the blessings that the person gets in life. And it says that Hashem delivers the blessing to the person on a regular basis, especially when it comes to the functioning of the human body. The Tikkun Zohar writes that the functioning of the human body is connected to the Midah that we are learning today, Tif Eret. And the reason is obvious. The majority of the key organs of the human body are in the torso, are in the center part of the body. Above the torso uh, is the shoulder and the arms, and below the torso are the legs, but the torso itself it covers key components of human life. So then how does a person expresses the gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu in such a level? He says very simple, the blessing of Asher Yatsar, which I'm sure that people do it, which is the blessing that we recite after we wash our hands every time we come out of the bathroom, number one or number two. We express our gratitude to Akadosh Baruch Hu that our body Baruch Hashem is able to function in the most a beautiful way. The way that Acha writes in the Shuchan Aruch, clearly right in the beginning of Or Haim Kadosh. Now, an additional concept is the topic of a Tif Eret, is how many times HaKadosh Baruch Hu brings additional blessings to the person. For example, the Pasuk writes, Israel Asher Becha It Pa'ar. The Jewish nation that God beautifies himself with us. What does it mean? But Olam says to the Malachim, look at my children in Tembury, in Aventura, in South Florida. They come into the synagogues to pray. They come in to learn Torah. A lot of good things that are happening all over the world. That brings a great amount of honor to Akadosh Baruch Hu. But it says if a person was blessed with the fountain of Shefa, the pipe of abundance, it says that extra additional blessing is not to be kept to the person, is for the person to share it with others in the sense of support Torah, support the needy, support the infirm, support the bride, support. In other words, share the blessing that Hashem gave you because that in a way brings more and more additional blessing to the world. But it says one key factor and it says as follows. If a person truly wants to develop and have a bit of an understanding on the topic of godliness, in life, the learning of the Torah is a mandatory requirement. And this is a fact that we know, that without the Torah learning, how we're going to be able to survive. Now, yesterday, I saw something very interesting. Let me see if I'm able to find it. Just give me a moment. Yes. is an updated a chart of Jewish survival. Give me a moment for me to find it. I saw it last night. And I read it twice. And I, in one way, I was okay. But on the other hand, I was not happy. Because it shows how fragile is the essence of Am Israel. He talks about families that do have certain connection to Torah, to communities, and to 
observance of misfot, how their future right here. So the article is the future of the United States Jewry. Will your grandchild be a Jew? This is the chart. I'm going to turn the camera right here. This is the chart. Will your grandchild be a Jew? That's a tough question to answer. So if we look, this refers the first generation, a hundred, actually each person is 10, so a thousand people. Orthodox, meaning observant of Torah, the next generation from a thousand will become 1,500. The third generation, 2,250. The fourth generation, 3,370. Chances of assimilation or intermarriage, 2%. Amount of children per family, average, 3. Conservative, 1,000, generation 1. 81, 810, generation 2. 650, third. Fourth, 52. Chance of assimilation, 24%. Amount of children, 1.82. Reform, we start with 1,000. Second generation, 510. Third generation, 260. Fourth generation, 130. Rate of assimilation, 79%. Rate of assimilation, 79%. Amount of children, 1.73. Non-observant, not affiliated, not connected. 1,000, first generation. 310, second. 110, third. 40, fourth generation. Amount of assimilation, 85%. Rabotai, these are new statistics. 2% when you are connected, 24 conservative, 79 reform, and 85 when there is zero affiliation. Hashem should help us that Hashem, each and every one of us, all inclusive, are part of the first group that only the numbers increase and the assimilation decreases. And that's in part, part of the Sefirah of today. It says, you want to connect with God? You need to learn Torah. Sure, prayer is important. Charity is important. Kindness is important. But when a person learns Torah, you're going straight to the source. Now, Ben Adam Le Havero, interpersonal, relationship it says look for the possibilities to help people what kind of help so here he brings two different levels of help one is anybody who needs any kind of assistance but the other one is sit down to learn with someone that is less knowledgeable invite him to a torah class sit down with him to learn homage to learn perasha to learn how to read prayers, and you're not doing a, you're not doing only the physical, excuse me, you're not only doing the physical action of Hesed, but you are actually doing a Hesed with the neshama of the person. Powerful. Now, additionally, the Gemara in Kiddushin discusses the misva of honoring parents. Mitzvah of honoring parents is a biblical commandment from the Torah. But there are ways of how to honor the parent. Besides not sitting in the chair, kissing the hand, standing up when they come in, when you go up to the Torah, etc. 
But what happens in the case that a son or daughter feed their parent? So it says the Gemara in Kiddushin, there are people who may give to the parents the most delicious type of meal available with a complaint. It's costing too much. Why well, you have such an expensive taste? Or a person does it with a long face. Or you can give your parents, matchino barechaim, you take wheat grains and you grind them in the meal and you give it to them with a smile, with patience, with understanding. And that's why it says the same way when you're going to feed someone. You should do it in a pleasant way, in a good way, in a happy way. When you're going to learn Torah with someone, ilmad be'ahava u'benahat, learn with love and calm. And that's why the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot actually tells us, we learned this a while back, lo akavdan melamed. Somebody that has a short fuse, somebody that has a temper, cannot be a teacher because he's not going to be happy that he needs to repeat the lesson a few times. Powerful message. But when you teach others pleasantly with kindness, so you're combining the emet of the Torah, the harmony that the Torah brings, because at the end of the day, the Torah brings the harmony between the convulsive world that we are living in and what is expected from us has Yehudim. Beautiful. And therefore it says, make sure that no day goes by without doing some type of chesed to someone. Beautiful, beautiful way. Type of chesed to someone. Beautiful, beautiful way. And with this, I will have to finish this class for today. Uh, I need to give the opening lecture for the Kolel, short version. But I need to be back, itorah.com, for the Perkei Avot class, especially in these holy weeks of the Sefirat Omer. So we express our gratitude to all of the sponsors of today, the Atiyah family, the Nahmias family, the Dweck family, and Be'ezat Hashem, the Neshamot have an Aliyah, and the person who needs a Refua Shelema should have a Refua Shelema among all of the Holim of Am Israel. Shavua Tov, Chodesh Tov, Besiman Tov. We'll be back at approximately 11 o'clock, back in aitora.com. Have a great day.